Good morning, everyone. It's uh, June fourteenth. Our church is still uh, closed for now. I know Doug Ford this week said that the churches could open with thirty percent capacity, but um, uh, we're we're not sure what we're going to do yet. We have to wait until our head office gives us direction. But uh, I'm a little nervous about opening up. We have a lot of seniors in our church, and I hate to get uh, have someone get sick who comes to our church and and shares it with the seniors, and then something happens that they get up, end up in the hospital or possibly die, possibly die. And I I don't want that to happen. Uh, it would be hard to take if if just to open the church somebody gets sick and dies. So we're going to take our time to reopen. And when we do, uh, we'll send out a letter to everybody explaining the requirements and the guidelines. And uh, hopefully uh, one day down the road, we'll get together on Sundays and, and worship. But for this morning, I'm just going again, going to again um, share a little devotional I've written. And I hope it means something to you in this present circumstances in the world um, with uh, the protesting and violence and uh, the the need for people to be heard and uh, sometimes we're very critical about situations but we don't know what people are going through at any moment in time and so it's important that we understand how we can communicate with others uh, in the best way possible as followers of jesus uh, we need to be uh, filled with compassion love and uh, caring for others so uh, before I start, I'm just going to read from James 3, 2 to 11. James 3, 2 to 11. And uh, it's talking about taming the tongue. It says here, we all stumble in many ways. Anyone who ha is never at fault in what they say is perfect, able to keep their whole body in check. When we put bits in our mouths, in the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we can turn the whole animal. Or take a ship as an example. Although they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are steered by a very small rudder wherever the pilot wants to go. Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boasts. Consider what a great, a great force is set on fire by a small spark. The tongue also is a fire, a world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole body, sets the whole course of one's life on fire, and is itself set on fire by hell. All kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and sea creatures are being tamed and have been tamed by mankind. But no one, no human being can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil, full of deadly poison. With the tongue we praise our Lord and Father, and with it we curse human beings who have been made in God's likeness. Out of the same mouth come praise and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this should not be. Can both fresh water and salt water flow from the same spring? My brothers and sisters, can a fig tree bear olives or a grapevine bear figs? Neither can a salt spring produce fresh water. So this passage is telling us that uh, when you praise God with our mouth and then curse people, and, uh, the praise is useless because they both have to come out as praise and worthy for all people. God and our and our neighbors and those in relationship with us around the world. We can't just pick and choose and say good words for God and bad words for people. That's not going to happen. God will turn away from that. We have to show loving kindness to each all, each and all of us. But today, I want to talk about the words we use. And since that's a, a topic now around our world about racism, homophobia, uh, slanderous against sexual orientation and so many other t things of bigotry. Uh, I want to talk about the words we use in our everyday speaking. I think we all know that words uh, that we use have can be very powerful. Our words can build up people, but unfortunately, they can also tear people down pretty quickly. Our words can encourage and they can damage. They can be filled with love and compassion, respect and honor, and they can be filled with hurt, hatred, criticism, racism, bigotry, homophobia, and many other uh, harmful things. 
What words do you use when you talk to or about others? How many times have you used words as a weapon to insult, hurt, or demean someone? In a moment of anger, you may have thought your harsh words were justified. But now as you look back, you realize they weren't the right words to use and that you regret using them in the first place. We've all heard the phrase, sticks and stones may break my bones, but names or words will never hurt me. And how many of you have ever said that? And personally, I think that's not true. Sure, negative words may not break bones, but they can really break the heart of someone. They can really hurt the spirit. They can damage our soul. They can destroy relationships. A bone can be healed and mended with a cast, but words that are said are left sitting on the heart and can damage long, a long time. The words people use have caused fights between friends, destroyed families, caused wars between nations, and death and destruction to people. We can be very cruel with our words. In fact, that's why people use harsh words in the first place. It's because we want to hurt someone. Someone has done something against us, so we want to crack back and say something that's going to hurt them. We want them to feel uh, less important, or, or we want others to look down on them. To hurt people, we use words that sting of racism, words that are homophobic or filled with slander. We use words that call out people who have a, a different sexual orientation. People who are in, in the, uh, look different than us. We call out and make fun of other people's religions, other people's cultures, and other people's faith. We'll use, what of, what of, what of, we'll use whatever words we think will hurt someone and make us think we look better when actually we don't. You know, sometimes I watch the news, and in fact, usually every night I watch the news, and it turns my stomach when I hear world leaders use condescending or belittling words that hurt their rivals. Lying Ted, or nice hair. He's got nice hair, though. I think all leaders need to be above this type of behavior. But I also believe as followers of Jesus, we need to be above this type of behavior. We need to show love, dignity, forgiveness, and compassion. People need to see Jesus through us, so our words matter. Now, I'm big enough to tell you all that over the years, I have used words that hurt a lot of people. I have six brothers and sisters. And growing up, if we didn't say a hurtful word to each other, it wasn't a normal day. So we've all done that. And I love my family very much. I've said hurtful words, I'm sure, to my wife. And uh, she'll respond back and tell me I've been sarcastic or I'm not being nice. I can come across as a tad sarcastic. And for people who know me, um, they would agree with that. I can be somewhat sarcastic. I sometimes think my sarcasm is funny, but it's not really funny to those I say it against because I can hurt people very quickly and uh, I can respond and it seems like harsh tones, but that's not my intention. I sometimes think I'm trying to be funny and I, uh, I blame it on being raised in the East Coast in Cape Breton where a lot of my friends and family are, are sarcastic people and uh, that's how we have grew up. But it's not acceptable. It shouldn't be that way. I think at one time or another, most of us have used hurtful words in an argument. And we know that those hurtful words only escalate the conflict to the point where it is out of control. That happens in my family. My brother or sister will say something uh, sarcastic or mean to one of their siblings, and then it just sends it off into another direction. And when that happens, nothing good is obtained. And most times we regret what we've said. A lot of times I regret what I've said. Conflicts happen in all relationships, though, don't it? But we have to handle it differently. Some people will yell. Some others will become quiet. 
Some people get defensive and blame others, and while some people get passive aggressive and act cold. Now, my wife, when she gets angry at me or disappointed in me, the middle of her forehead here crinkles together, and I know I've crossed the line. And when that crinkles up on her forehead, I usually know I'm in trouble. But I find that no matter what happens in a conflict, our words will always take center stage. And really, that's not healthy. The reason is because in the heat of the moment, we typically aren't thinking about how we speak to someone. You see, our words can carry a lot of power. And unfortunately, uh, negative, hurtful words will always damage our relationships, not only with each other, but more importantly, with God. God wants us to speak words of encouragement, love, honor, and respect, and peace. That's the only way we can build strong relationships with people and with God himself. So if words can build and words can destroy relationships, how should we communicate in the best way possible, even when we don't feel like saying the right things? Because sometimes just saying the wrong things feels better sometimes in the moment, in the heat of the moment. How do we stop using words that hurt people? Is there a way to communicate that creates a stronger friendships and healthier relationships? How do we speak to people so that they know we have given our lives to Christ? That's a big one. I've heard many people who are critical and condescending and hurt use hurtful words, and yet they profess to be followers of Christ. You can't do that. And what I read in the scripture is, how can you praise God in one moment and speak down the next moment on somebody else? It can't happen. You're not really a follower of God. You're not really a follower of Christ if you speak that way. It can only happen when we speak words of love rather than hate, words of compassion rather than bigotry and racism, words of healing rather than hurt. In a book of Proverbs, Proverbs 15 and 1, it has something to say on this very topic. The verse says this, A gentle answer deflects anger, but harsh words make tempers flare. This verse says we have two choices. We can use gentle words or we can use harsh ones. Let's start with the second half of the verse. It says, but harsh words make tempers flare. Harsh is such a great descriptive word. When I hear it, I immediately connect it with something unpleasant. Harsh words are grating and they lack tact. They're sharp and they bite. Harsh words are generally delivered in an angry tone with the intention of winning a conversation. And I find harsh words only shut down a conversation because these harsh words will spark anger in the listener. Just imagine yourself on the other side of a harsh statement. I expect that that's not too difficult to do because we've all been in those situations where we received harsh words from someone. What was your reaction? Did you feel frustrated, ashamed? Did you get upset? Were you angry at that person for speaking harshly? Did you cower away and not speak to them? No one responds in a positive way when someone comes at us with harsh, hurtful, harsh words. Now let's look at the other option. It says a gentle answer turns away wrath. Gentle words will make it difficult to be mad. Think about it. If you approach someone in anger or frustration and they respond back with patience, kindness, and self-control, it seems to deflate the problem. I've seen that on TV where just recently where uh, people are protesting, they're screaming and hollering at the cop, the cops that are standing there trying to block their way. And instead of confronting them, the cop and the police go down on one knee. It shows respect. It shows honor. And the people would then come over and hug the cop and clap for them. And it diffuses the situation just by taking a knee. They didn't have to say anything. Kneeling down says it all. I am sure most of us have been in an argument that turned ugly fast. We've also been in conflicts where it could have gone bad very quickly, but it didn't because cooler heads prevail. You see, gentle words 
take the high road and it leaves the person on the other end of the conversation with a choice. They can take the conversation in a more negative direction or they can respond in kind with kindness, patience, and respect. When we use gentle words during a conflict, we open the door to conversation, to resolution, to peace. And I think that's incredibly powerful. When it comes to dealing with conflict and arguments, if we want to invest in our relationships, if we want to share the love of Jesus with others, we only have just one choice, and that is using gentle words. We have so much power to impact and influence people, either positively or negatively. So why not do it positively? And we have more power and more control over a situation than we may think. And if we want to keep our influences with our family and friends and other people in our life, it's critical to use gentle words. We want a better shot at explaining ourselves to or telling people about Christ's salvation. Then we need to use words that convey humility, consideration, love, and respect. However, this is easier said than done, particularly when we're upset. But if we're trying to use our words differently now, when we're thinking rationally, it can help us later when it's more difficult to think clearly. Ultimately, we must ask ourselves this. Would we rather make a point or be heard? Because oftentimes making a point and being heard are not the same thing. Making a point is about our ability to snap back at a person and shut down the conversation, isn't it? It's about winning. I'm going to win this conversation. I'm going to win this argument. That only ends up in a bad way. It's about who has the best sarcastic comeback. We may say what we want to say, and it may feel good in the moment, but the other person won't leave feeling good about us. And I don't think that's how we should or tell people, should tell people about Jesus. We want them to feel good about talking to us so that we can share the love of God with them. What we say now will continue to resonate later in a person's life. So we need to watch our tone. We need to choose our words carefully because we value the relationships we have now and the ones we will have later. And that means if we want to be heard by others, we must make sure that they're heard by us. And that means if we want to be like that, we have to do that in every part of our situation, every part of our life. My wife and I, before COVID shut down, we used to like to go to restaurants and have a bite to eat. And I made sure I was all, we were always kind to the waitress and, and waiters that came to serve us. We spoke to them. I asked them about their life. I know about many of their lives. And it's important to know that, to get to know them. I can't do it if I'm harsh words. If I don't like my meal, I don't complain about it. I might say it wasn't as good as I had hoped, but I don't get mad. I don't express anger. I just show love and respect. And we've re they've reciprocated that back many times in our life, the people who have served us. And that means if we want to be heard by others, we must make sure that they're heard by us. And being heard is about listening to both now what's said and not said. The slogan we've all heard lately and, and for the last few years is Black Lives Matter. It's about being heard. Everyone knows, obviously, that all lives matter to God. But we need to understand and listen to the oppression, the racism that the world holds against the black and brown communities. We need to understand and realize that black lives matter not only to us, but to God. We need to make sure that we're all treated with respect and dignity, not just us white people, but everybody in the world, no matter what color, race, uh, culture, religion, uh, sexual orientation, uh, whatever they are or whoever they are, they need to be treated with respect and honor and dignity. They need the same rights and freedoms that everyone enjoys. You know, last week I spoke about wisdom. If you want to look back last week, you'll hear me speak about it. But wisdom is about listening and hearing the other person. It's about experience, knowledge, and good judgment. It's about being calm, patient, and showing kindness in our words to any situation that may come our way. 
as believers and followers of Jesus, we want to show people his light in our life. We want to show his wisdom. We want to show people what he has done for us. However, this can't be done if we speak harsh, critical, or racist, or homophobic, slanderous, harmful words. We will never, ever have people in our life if we speak like that. God won't be in our life if we speak like that. He doesn't want us to be like that. It can only happen when we speak with gentle words. Gentleness will give us influence with others. People will be more likely to listen to, the, listen to us if we are gentle with them. Using gentle words and a kind tone won't keep us from disagreeing with people. I might never agree with someone, but it will keep the relationship from being damaged long term. I can disagree with someone's opinion, but if I do it in a gentle, nice, calming, loving tone, we can disagree and move on and still care for each other. And maybe, just maybe, someone will hear our message. And that's what God wants us to do. He wants people to hear the message of the good news of Jesus Christ, his saving grace on the cross when he died for each one of us. But what would our world look like if we spoke loving, compassionate, gentle words? What would it look like if we treated each other with dignity, respect, honor, compassion, and love? I think we would have a world that God intended us to have where everyone is heard, everyone listens, and everyone has a voice, and where everyone knows him as their savior. In today's world, that seems to be missing, because many people in our world don't have a voice, particularly the black and brown communities, particularly those who are different than us, particularly people who have, who our sexual orientation is different, or religion is different, culture is different. They don't have a voice, and they're being missed in this world. We're missing their uh, life in our lives. So people, we tend to push them down. We tend to belittle them and treat them like animals and place them in circumstances that won't help them to grow emotionally, spiritually, and healthy. I saw a video the other day on Facebook or YouTube, and it was the union leader from the New York Police Department standing with his group of officers behind him. And he was hollering, telling people, we, don't, we feel like we're being treated like animals. We know we're not animals. We want to be treated with respect. And I think that's what Black Lives Matter is about, treating people with respect and stop treating the black and brown communities as animals. They are people, they are God's people. There are our people. We all come together as one. When we stand before God, he won't look at our color or, or, or our religion or our sexual orientation. He'll judge us by our heart, by how we've given our life to him. And I pray that each one of you uh, uh, understands this in your life. But daily, the black and brown communities and others face discrimination and bigotry. I believe God detests how we treat others. I know God desires that we exist in an honest community of close relationships. I know he wants us to live in harmony with each other and that we give our lives over to him and receive his mercy, grace, and salvation. And if we are speaking harsh and harmful words against someone and it turns them away from God, God will judge us on that. So we must, as followers of Christ, speak of love and caring. Because lo to you, if you speak harsh against someone and they turn from God. However, for that to happen, it will mean we need to take the first step and decide for ourselves to change from what we are to what God wants us to be. It means we need to love, respect, honor everyone. And that can only happen when we give our lives to Jesus and begin using caring, loving, gentle words. Words that show respect kindness, peace, dignity, compassion, love, and honor. Words that are inclusive. There's a big word, inclusive. Words that are inclusive. Words that are accepting of everyone. Words that no matter what religion, gender, sexual orientation, or culture, or color, or look a person may be, we need to use words that include them, that include others, that include uh, a relationship with all of our friends, all of our neighbors, all of our community. 
And we need to show dignity, respect, and kindness, gentleness, love, and compassion to everyone. Jesus gave his life on the cross for everyone. Now, some people think that's not a big deal. And they think, well, he just he died for me. Well, the reality is he didn't die just for good people. He didn't give his life on the cross just for the Christians or just for us. He gave his life so that all may be saved. Jew, Gentile, Muslim, black, white, people in all cities, people in all countries. He died for all the people in the world. He didn't just die for me. He died for everyone. And so we need to treat everyone like he died, like like he wants us to treat them. He gave his life for everyone. So surely to jump in so we can give our life to the people too. Sometimes we think he is just our God, but that's not true because he's the God of all. God for all. And in the end, we'll stand before him and account for how we treated each other. On the news, we've seen a black man named George Floyd be killed for just being black. And I know you might say, well, he, he fought against the police, whatever. It doesn't matter. He was black and he, was, they, he felt the sting of racism and the death because of racism. We hear slogans about racism and how black lives matter, as I mentioned. You see, black lives do matter and racism should not be part of our lives. Men and women of color are screaming out to be heard, to be treated equal, to be protected, and to receive the same rights and freedoms that everyone else has in our communities. You see, the way we speak can be harsh and hurtful to everyone. Instead of hurting people, let's build others up. Let's build others up with love, encouragement respect and dignity let's support people so that everyone can experience jesus saving grace let's stand against those who use words that damage and destroy let's show them what followers of jesus look like let's walk with our friends and neighbors and partners and along this journey and encourage each one of us no matter what color race or religion or sexual orientation we are Let's love each other. Let's have a world where everyone will hear gentleness and love. And truly, that is what God calls us to do, to love each other. You know, it's been uh, 27 minutes now since I was, I've was i been speaking. It's a little longer than I normally, normally would go. But I just want to take this time now to uh, pray for you. And uh, if you're going through a difficult time, uh, please uh, get on your knees and pray to God and let him help you. If your day is going well and you feel good, pray to him also. Pray him, pray to God in all times. I'd ask that you continue to lift up people in our community who are hurting and suffering. You may not know them, but God knows them. I pray that you continue to pray for my wife, Karen. Uh, she's still on her journey uh, fighting cancer, and I just ask you to, lay, to uh, pray for her health. And, uh, and she's pretty good mood and she's a great spirit so i pray for, i ask you to pray for her uh pray for our church pray for our church community that's everyone and maybe one day we'll be able to get together and worship again uh, let's just bow our heads father god i just thank you for those who are listening and i pray that you would lay your hand upon them may they feel your grace and mercy may they feel your power your love help us lord to be gentle Help us to speak to each other with kindness and love and respect. Help us to get any racism out of our minds and our hearts and help us to be clean. Wash us as white as snow and help us to be all that you want us to be. Father, you are the great God. You're the only God in this world who we can turn to. And we thank you for that. We thank you for your son, Jesus, who gave his life on the cross for each one of us. And if there's someone listening who doesn't know you, that I pray that your Holy Spirit will lay upon them, soften their heart and heart, that they will experience you in a new way. I pray you bless us all and give us your grace and mercy. In Jesus' name, amen. I thank you for listening. If you want to connect with me, you can uh, friend, friend me on Facebook and uh, leave a message on Messenger, and uh, I'll answer back. You can also uh, drop a like, make a comment in the sections below. 
I like to hear from you. It's uh, nice to know that people are actually listening. I pray you just uh, have a great day and may God's mercy be upon you. May he bless you and give you peace and understanding and love in all things. God bless and have a great week. And uh, remember next week's Father's Day. And uh, remember our fathers this week as we get closer to that day. Uh, have a great week. God bless.